As we dive deeper into customizing Shotgun, we want to think about the different roles on our team and their workflows so that we can customize to their needs. This is especially important in the beginning, but equally as important is being open to our customizations evolving over time. So, we'll begin with a good foundation to start from with the idea that each page we build will be iterated on over the life cycle of our project. Let's start to customize this information from our existing project dashboard. If we want to create a global page that shows us information around all projects, we can create a new page from the Pages drop-down and clear the project field. But since this project dashboard is a great dashboard to start from, let's go into Design Page Mode. In general, this first overview view is great for everyone on our team to see, so we'll keep it as is, and then we'll add a couple more views based on specific roles. First, let's think about our producers and what they are tracking over time. For starters, we know that they are constantly scanning for things that are blocked and tasks that are behind schedule. They'll need to see what's upcoming in the next sprint so that they can make sure work is assigned and kicked off at the right time. And they need to be able to report on the overall state of production at any given moment, so some simple charts showing the high-level status of everything would be super helpful. Most pages can have new views. They give us more flexibility in showing more specific information without having to create a separate page. So let's create a new view for our producers. We have a few views to choose from. Grid, which is a list view showing us a list of records. Thumbnail, which is a thumbnail view showing us a more graphical layout of each record. And URL, a full page view of supported web pages. Let's choose the canvas type, which is a page of different widgets that can each display their own set of data just like we saw in the overview. We can also restrict access to views, which we'll do in this case, restricting to managers and admins. Now, let's add our first widget, the grid widget, which is just like a list view page. Let's configure it to show tasks and name it blocked tasks. By default, this grid is showing us all tasks in the entire project. Let's start by adjusting the layout a bit and hiding some of the fields displayed. Now, let's apply a filter so that we only see blocked tasks. This includes a simple condition where the status of the task is either blocked or on hold. Now, our producers will know exactly which tasks they need to investigate and unblock. Let's save, and as we work on our dashboard further, it's always a good practice to save frequently, so we'll continue to do that as we're building. Also, canceling from the page level means that we'd also lose all of the widgets we built from our last save, which we definitely don't want to do here. Now, let's add another grid widget that will show us all tasks that are overdue. Instead of creating it from scratch, let's duplicate our existing one since we like the layout we configured already. Let's rename this one to Tasks Overdue and adjust our filter to show us the following conditions. Status is not final and the due date is before today, a floating date option that always evaluates to either today, yesterday, or tomorrow. Now, let's add a visual of upcoming tasks in the next sprint, so producers can plan for work that needs to get started on. Let's use the Task Gantt widget and adjust the columns again. Group by Assign to. Then, create a filter will show tasks where the status is not final. Then, we'll want to show the sprint start date that the tasks are linked to. Then, let's show tasks linked to sprints that will start in the next two weeks, since in our development cycle, sprints are time boxed at two weeks. And let's show a summary of task statuses for all of our assets in the project. We'll use one of the pre-configured widgets and display this as a pie graph type. 
We can always adjust these further if needed, but this looks great as is, so let's save. Now, let's take a moment to adjust the layout and spruce things up a bit. Let's add a row to break up our page a little. Then, we can adjust the number of rows and columns, and specify column widths. We'll play around a little to get things just right. We can build more views for other roles on our team, iterate, and evolve as we work on our project.